purposes of ASMR, I will read quite slowly, because I think sometimes some reading can be a bit fast for ASMR.
gospel of God. You are witnesses in God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe. As you know, how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God, which are in Judea in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen just as they did from the Judeans, who killed both the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they do not please God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles, that may be saved. And so as always, to fill up the measure of their sins, but wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Not an art. Endeavoured more eagerly to see your face with great desire. And therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. But Satan ended us. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence? of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. For you are our glory and joy. Chapter 3 Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone, and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow labourer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you you concerning your faith, that no one should be taken by these afflictions. And for you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. For, in fact, we told you before, when we were just, when we were with you, that we would suffer tribulation, just as it happened. And you know, for this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I seemed to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor might be in vain. But now that Timothy has come to us from you, and brought us good news of your faith and love, and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desiring to see us, as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, in all our affliction and distress, we were comforted concerning you by your faith. For now we live, if you stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God for you, and for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God, night and day. 
urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification. Esteem them very highly in love for their work. 
sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. The second epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Thessalonians. Chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God, our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, which we, for which you also suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay the tribulation of those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest, with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ they shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day be glorified in his saints, and to be admired among all those who believe, because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness, and the work of faith with power. Jesus Christ may be glorified in you, and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 2 Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word, by letter, as if from us, as so though the day of the Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling way comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, 
is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery, mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy what the brightness of, with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned, who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good way, word and work. Chapter 3 Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, and into the patience of Christ. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly, and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we might be not be a burden to any of you. Not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, Neither shall he eat, for we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busy bodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in the, this epistle, know that person and do not keep company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him 
as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way.